Hello. Before we start talking about ocean optimism, I want to ask you a question. Please think for a few seconds about your first memory of the ocean. First time you went to the beach when you were kids with your parents, maybe. For how many of you that was a pleasant, memorable experience? Raise your hands. Anybody who had a bad experience? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear what happened to you. But, uh, you know, this is our baseline of what the ocean was like, what, what's natural in the ocean. My baseline was this man, Jacques Cousteau, growing up on the Mediterranean coast of Spain, watching his documentaries on, on Sunday evening. And I tried to emulate his... Uh, um, <laughs> He was a little skinnier than me. Um, but I was confused because he showed us all this abundance of life, groupers, stingrays, seals, whales, dolphins. But wh what I saw when I swam in the Mediterranean was this. Bare bottoms, the fishes that you can see were smaller than my little diving mask. There were no dolphins or groupers to be seen. And I didn't know where was the disconnect. And then I became a marine biologist and I became a, a researcher and a professor at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And I learned that all over the world, the situation was similar. We have taken fish out of the ocean faster than they can reproduce. And 90% of the large predators are gone because we ate them. Pollution is a real problem now, especially with plastics every year. 8 million tons of plastic enter the ocean, and that's killing hundreds of thousands of seabirds, marine mammals, sea turtles. And global warming is making the ocean warmer and more acidic, killing coral reefs throughout the world. And, 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 and there is a litany of horrors here. So I felt like the, uh, I was, what I was doing was just writing the obituary of the ocean with more and more precision. And I found that very frustrating. But I started working on something called marine reserves, areas that are close to fishing. And what happens when you don't kill fish? Hey, they take a longer time to die. <laughs> <laughs> and they grow larger, and they reproduce more. And you can see things like this. You can see miracles like this. This is the first time I went to a place called Cabo Pulmo with Octavio Aburto and my Mexican colleagues. That place was made a marine reserve, an area without fishing. We went back 10 years later, and this is what we found. These marine reserves are one solution that always works. If there is no fishing in an area, if there is no development, if we leave this area on its own, it comes back spectacularly. On average, the abundance of fish inside the marine reserve is five times greater than in the unprotected areas nearby. Not only that, but when the fish come back, the divers come in. And tourism, ecotourism in these marine reserves is creating jobs and bringing a lot of money to these places. In the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, the tourism revenue is 40 times the revenue of fishing. And it employs tens of thousands of people. And also, because the fish grow so large and they reproduce so much, they spill over the boundaries of these reserves, help re helping to replenish the areas around these, these uh, protected areas. And the fishermen are catching more and increasing their incomes. So these places are like savings accounts with interest that everybody can enjoy. Therefore, I decided to quit academia and work on this, try to help to create as many of these as possible. So I went to National Geographic and I came up with this idea of the pristine seas. Let's go to the wildest places in the ocean, places that still look like the ocean of the past, that are unprotected and try to protect them. I put together a team, National Geographic in their infinite wisdom decided it was a good idea. And I put together a team and let's take a look at the video. We are defined by the environments that we live in. 
When they say, where do you come? The first thing that comes to my mind is the reef, the forest, the corals. Maybe that's who I am. The moment I set my eyes on these remote islands, I know why we're here. This place is melting like a popsicle in Arizona in the summertime. The big fish are gone. They have been fished out. And it only takes a few fishing boats, and they can remove hundreds of years of biomass in just a very short period of time. After 10 years as a professor, I realized that I was just writing the obituary of the ocean. I quit academia and assembled a team to do something about it. I want to show to the world what the ocean was like hundreds of years ago and why we have to preserve them. This is one of these rare places on Earth, a time machine, where we can see the ocean of the past. What we do is hunt out the last pristine places in the ocean and protect them. The ocean has amazing regenerative power. We just need to let it heal itself. In one single pulse, in one immeasurably powerful heartbeat, the ocean has just changed my life. Thanks. So this is, this is what we've been doing in the last eight years. We have partnered with some organizations represented in this, in this room and local governments. And we have conducted expeditions to the most remote places in the ocean, places that are still relatively unfished or untouched, and used a combination of research with science to show how pristine these places are and why it's so important to protect them and economic research showing what are the benefits of protection relative, uh, rather than over-exploitation. And then media. We produce films and magazine articles, lots of social media. So we have played with the emotional and the rational to try to inspire country leaders to protect these places in, in very large national parks. And we've been uh, very lucky to work with visionary leaders that have uh, created 13 of the largest marine reserves in the world in the last eight years. The green areas are areas that are already protected. The blue areas are areas that are not protected yet, but we are very confident that they are, they are going to be protected before 2020. And this is great news. You know, that, that's what keeps me optimistic. When I feel bad, I look at the map and say, okay, we, you know, there is hope. But we cannot sleep on our laurels. You know, we cannot relax because only Three and a half percent of the ocean is protected. This shows what area of the ocean has been protected since the first one was created in the Bahamas in 1955. There has been a huge increase in protection in the last 10 years, but only three and a half percent of the ocean is under some kind of protection now, marine protected areas. But some of these allow fishing. They don't work to restore marine life like these no-take marine reserves. And right now, less than 2% of the ocean, 1.6% of the ocean is in fully protected areas. The goal of the United Nations, the target by 2020, is 10% of the ocean protected. We wish that that 10% was in no-take areas because these are the areas that truly bring back marine life and have benefits beyond their boundaries, right? So there is a lot of work to do, but 
all the organizations working on the protection of these large areas have shown, have proven that this can be done, right? And we just need to continue until 2020, try to get to 10%. We estimate that if all of the areas that have already been committed by governments or are in the works are created, we'll get to at least 6%. But scientific studies recommend that on average, 30% of the ocean should be protected. I'm giving you lots of numbers, but just to summarize, right now, less than 2% of the ocean is fully protected. We need to get to 10% by 2020, and ideally to 30% by 2030. We know it can be done. We know that if we find the right leaders, we can inspire them to do this. So let's keep working and make sure that we will not only preserve these wild places in the ocean that are the only baselines left for what's natural in the ocean, but also to bring back all of these other areas that have been degraded. As that example in Cabo Pulmo showed, we can bring back places that are dead. So that's my message of hope today. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs>